Hello folks and welcome to the results of the 2020 Cooler Master World Series. Now over the last few months, over 90 projects were submitted for the competition, which in itself is a pretty amazing statistic. But on top of that, the standard of work was absolutely incredible and the breadth of scope equally so. Things ranging from the sane to the downright silly and incredible. So I think it's about time we went through who the winners are for this year. Now I think it just makes sense that we kick things off by looking at the winner of the Tower Mod category which was Project Ares by Explore Modding. Now the starting point here was the C700M chassis but the entire interior was gutted and replaced with something incredibly custom indeed. In fact the motherboard tray not only has the power supply and wiring all built into it but it can rotate 180 degrees and is motorised no less. Now the water cooling is connected to the main chassis via a series of really interesting sliders and soft tubing that stop everything from having issues with rotating and that's really clever. But it's not just about the sort of gimmicks, this whole rig is sci-fi themed and it is absolutely beautiful, ranging from the colour choices such as teal and orange all the way to the interesting use of fibre optics in the front panel that give it a sort of a starry night sky appearance. The whole thing sits on top of a thick acrylic base with lighting built into it, which really I think just accentuates all of the sci-fi themes. Definitely go through the project log because there's so much more detail here that I haven't been able to mention in this short description. It's a truly fantastic project and congratulations Alessandro. Next up we have the winner of the Scratch Mod category which was Ikigai by Nick Falzone. Now this project is simply beautiful. So much effort has been put into the fit and finish and it really shows. Not only that, he started off with all the hand joinery of the wooden pieces. And I think this adds so much character because it really shows how he's worked the wood and had to understand the material to its core to make it work in the way he wants it to. Not only that, it's paired with some wonderful CNC work in the form of the distro plates and other details. Now all this lends an incredible minimalist appearance to this mod. It belies its complexity in how simple it comes across and that is a real skill. All the details like the wiring, the wood choices, the finishes, they all complement one another and it's incredibly difficult to do that. So congratulations Nick, the project was an absolute success and it's a well deserved win. Now we have the Design and Innovation Award which went to Spirit of Motion by Maximum Bubble Mods. Now it's not hard to see why this one scored so highly. So many processes were used in the construction of this mod. It's absolutely fantastic, ranging from the impressive CNC work all the way to welding the entire front cage. And this is thick aluminium, that's not easy to do. Now the whole front hinges on the back which meant that the entire interior had to have a really beefy aluminium structure as well. Now to complement these shapes, the exterior was then accented with 3D prints which were then all painted to match the same red colour that's used throughout the build with black being used on the inside to accent all the components. Now this build was actually inspired by the Spirit of Motion car and I think it really shows in the design. It is nigh on identical to the front grille pattern used in the vehicle and since it was built for the modest father I think he'll be really pleased with the results. The best craftsmanship award goes to AK Mod with his project Cyberpunk Deconstruction and again it's not hard to see why this one scored so highly. The amount of work involved is absolutely mind boggling, even the 3D modelling on this one is incredibly challenging. The detail involved in deconstructing all the parts from the game and then rebuilding from them from scratch to be able to 3D print them is incredible. But it's not just an exercise in 3D printing, there's a huge amount of CNC machining painting, all the custom work and just theming everything in such a way that it looks like it came straight out of the game despite being a fully functional PC. That's really difficult. Even down to things like the wiring. A lot of people will stick with the standard systems for wiring but no AK chose to have everything be completely out there and resemble conduits much like the wiring in the game itself. It's all these little details that just add up and show how much effort went into this project. Again, definitely look through the project log, there's so much to see. Now the best art direction prize actually ended up being shared between Sneaker Mod by JMDF and AMG Project by SA Mod. Now Sneaker Mod is simply hilarious. It is a fully working PC inside a giant shoe. There aren't many of those about, that's for sure. Now the whole thing was actually constructed from aluminium extrusions and 3D prints and this is what allows for this incredible form. 
but it's not a simple matter of just printing off your design. No, aside from having to design it in the first place, you need to finish all the 3D prints and paint them, and this was all done to an incredible standard. It just looks fantastic. You know what? I'd love to see it in person because this thing is great fun. Well done. Now on the other end of the spectrum, we have AMG Project by SA Mod, which has a very serious and mean look indeed, largely provided by the complete structural rework for the C700P chassis. Now this was done because there is no back panel, which means a lot of things needed to change. So that meant a new motherboard tray and interesting 3D printed parts for the base, which add those vented patterns. And these were finished incredibly well. They're incredibly smooth. You wouldn't know that they're made from multiple parts at all very effective indeed. Now the rest of the theme is complemented by a black and neon green aesthetic which is carried into the water cooling loop which sits on the back of the motherboard tray. It's incredibly neat and definitely fits the theme pretty well I think. And now we come to the partner awards which were handed out by the competition sponsors. First up we have the Performance and Aesthetics Prize, which went to AK Mod and his deconstruction project as well. So congratulations AK on managing to scoop up this one in addition to the Craftsmanship Award. Next we have the Cooled and Overclocked Award which goes to Sat by Tim Pillay. Now this project is absolutely out there because not only does it look like a satellite but many of the sort of thematic elements of a satellite were interpreted within the design such as the minimal chassis which is basically as light as possible and the water cooling which was interpreted as solar panels. But not only as solar panels, but the solar panels actually fold up like a real satellite does to be able to get it into space. And that's really clever, a really interesting use of rotary fittings and the rigid tubing to be able to get all that done in such a neat package. Well done Tim, it's really something special and unique. Now the best gaming theme award goes to Spiral by Tag Mods. Now this is an interesting one because Ethan started off with an NR200P chassis, but rather than modding the inside of the chassis and making it very small, he instead decided to make sort of a sheath for it. So it's a huge MDF structure which has been CNC cut and then themed to look like one of the pieces from the game control. And the idea here is that the NR200P basically slides in from the front. And this is really interesting because it means that actually the utility of the case is largely preserved, but he's managed to work the theme of the game into the mod. So it's a really interesting approach to take on this particular one and definitely not something I would have expected. And finally, we have the Small and Mighty Award, which goes to Gravity Control by MP Customized. Now, what Mike chose to do here is take his NR200B chassis and place it on its end, essentially making the chassis tall and thin rather than long and fat. Now, the interesting thing here is this allows it to fit the theme of the buildings from Control pretty well. To do this, Mike 3D printed a bunch of additional panels that basically replace the existing ones on the chassis. Now, the inside of the chassis is then complemented by a complex water loop, which has been finished to a very high standard and kept incredibly neat, hence Mighty. Now, finally, we come to the Gaming Gear Awards, which are for peripheral mods done in the style of the mods in the competition. First up, we have the Best Overall Design Award, which also went to Ares by Explore Modding. So what Alessandra chose to do here was construct essentially a mouse mat out of acrylic. So he took a big old piece of acrylic and engraved it and cut it to match the mod. Now this is really effective because he placed LEDs on the side, so it essentially lights up from the inside. And this really matches the mod to a T. It's very effective. Now I wonder how well it works as a mouse mat itself. Next we have the best enhancement idea which went to Cyberpunk by Tantric Mods. Now what Mikey did here is he started off by 3D printing a stand for the mouse which also acts as a mouse bungee. In addition to this utility it looks like one of the items from the game, it's very effective with the structure that he chose. Now to match the game even further he then took the mouse and the keycaps of the keyboard and painted them with a the yellow aesthetic that you'll find throughout Cyberpunk. Now finally we have the Gamer's Choice Award which goes to Black Magic by Tamuda Square. Now Nick wanted to preserve all of the utility of the peripherals. It was imperative that gaming would not be hindered by any of the mods that he chose. So to that extent he went about taking them all apart so that he could paint them very thoroughly in the same matte black and gloss black theme of his own tower mod. Now the really interesting details here all come from the occult iconography that he's worked throughout the pieces and I think it's very effective. Now with the prizes all announced, there's one more piece of information that I'd really like to have a chat with you about, and that is Cooler Masters Cmod X Initiative. 
The premise behind Seamod X is that Cooler Master wants to work with the modders from this year's Cooler Master World series to produce a set of limited edition chassis and mods based on the entrance for the competition, and this is where you come in. Cooler Master would really like to know which projects across their entire lineup were your favourites, so be sure to check the gallery link in the description below. There are so many fantastic projects that didn't get to be mentioned in today's video alongside the fantastic winners. So definitely go check those out, and then be sure to leave a comment as well down below stating which was your favourite. Because who knows, in the future you might be able to get to see that one produced by Cooler Master for sale in their Cmod X store. So remember folks, check out the links, post your favourites, keep modding, stay safe, and I'll catch you next time.